What is going on? Alex here with a new video and today I'm going to be talking about the main differences between an IASA flight engineer and an FA aircraft mechanic. If you're new to my channel and you like topics that are related to aviation, business, finance and marketing, please subscribe, hit the notification bell and without any further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is going to be the main certification differences between both licenses. And, and just to make it clear, with the FAA, it's not called a license, it's called a certificate, but just so I don't keep making that correction, I'm gonna call both of them a license, so I'm not going back and forth. If you want to get certified under the FAA, well, you can choose to be certified with an airframe or power plant rating or both. I would always recommend that you get both ratings because you would be more uh, valuable in the marketplace. With YASA, it doesn't matter, you will always be certified with both. The main difference is that with the FAA, you can work from a Cessna 172 to a Boeing 787. With YASA, it just doesn't work like that. So for example, if you wanted to work in a Boeing 787, you would and do major work on it you would need a b1.1 license so the b1 allows you to do major work on the aircraft such as overhauls and stuff like that and then the point one would allow you to work in fixed wing aircraft that have a turbine engine if you wanted to work in a cessna 172 and do major work on it then you would need a b1.2 license in this video i'm not going to cover what what each and every single license does that would be a completely different topic i'm going to cover the main differences if you guys want to see what each license allows you to do hey comment below and i'll work on a video also the fa does not have a separate license to work in avionics with yasa you would have to get a b2 license in order to work in avionics just to reiterate with the fa license you can pretty much work on any type of aircraft as long as you have experience on the work that you're doing and with yasa whether you're working on a, on a fixed wing or a helicopter and whether you're doing major work or minor work or you're doing avionics work then you would need separate licenses it does make it a little bit harder with yasa but i do kind of like their approach so that being said, let's get into the next main difference, which is the experience that you need to get certified. Both the IASA and the FA have what's called a part 147 school. So you can go to the school and get all the training and get certified, but let's talk about the difference between both. So with the FA, you go to the part 147 school, you go through the course, it usually takes anywhere, you know, I think it's like two years and you get certified and you can start working. With YASA, it doesn't work like that. You got to go to the school and then you have to gain two years of experience in the field and then you become certified. Also, both allow you to get uh, certified by doing like home studying or, you know, gaining uh, experience in the field. With the FA, you can, if you're trying to get both the airframe and the power plant ratings, you can have 30 months of experience in the field and then you can get your license. With IASA, is going to be five years of experience that you need in the field before you can get certified. The third main difference is going to be in regards to the licensing process. With YASA, you can get licensed through any of the countries in the European Union. With the FAA, well, you can only get certified in the United States. That's how it works with YASA. You have to go to the uh, competent authority, which is the national, or it's also called the National um, Aviation Authority of the country, one of the countries in the European Union. And then through them, you can apply to become an EASA certified uh, aircraft engineer. And the last major difference is going to be renewal. So with the FAA, you can get licensed and that license is forever. But with EASA, you have to renew the license every five years if not the privileges will be revoked so these are the main differences between both licenses if you liked the video and you found it helpful i would really appreciate a thumbs up and if you guys have any recommendations on future videos comment below and uh, i will see you guys in the next video